Now, what do we know about this? Well, we know a lot of things. We know that, uh, well, that was real bad. It should come down here. No, it should not come down here. What am I doing? It's a bad graph. Obviously a bad graph. Okay, so it was a negative one before. Now it turns into positive one, and it goes like this, right? And it hits right there, and it goes up. Right? So then it's important for us to know where the x-intercept is. Obviously this one is positive and the other one is negative. Get that? Okay? Because it reflects along uh, up from the x-axis. So now what we know is that point because it just got reflected up. It's still at negative 2 but now it's at positive 5. That should be negative by the way. Right? Do you get that? Do you get that? So what we can find out are those two points. They're still the same as the original x-intercepts, right? Still exactly the same. Um, now, what we could do is we could, let's say, put a 2 in front of that. Put a big 2 in front of that. What is that? Think about it. What is that in terms of transformations? It's a 2 dilation. It's a stretch factor. It's a dilation. That's what dilation means. So many students don't know what dilation means. Think of your pupils dilate. It's a stretch factor. Your blood vessels dilate. You know, it gets bigger. So, that 2 is, by the way, is that outside or inside? It's outside, that means it goes up and down, so it's a stretch factor two this way, so now it's twice as tall. So twice as tall, you know, so many people, so many bad teachers teach it this way, and they go, oh, uh, it's thinner. No, it's not, it's twice as tall. Those teachers are full of shit, right? It's twice as tall, so now instead of five, instead of being at five, now it's at 10. Boom. And these get little, steeper as well. Does that make sense? Okay? And then, you know, as transformations go, if I had a negative 7, guess what happens? Everything moves down 7. whoop de doo It's easy stuff. Alright, you get this. You get this. I'm going to give you some homework. You better do the homework. Alright, Michi, you need to do this. This is easy stuff. And if you ever get stuck, just watch this video again because it's super fun to watch math videos on YouTube. Alright, so, let's say if a question, um, let's, let's say if they give you this, f of x equals this, um, it lo looks like a cubic function, but hey, let's not assume now, f of x looks like that, g of x, it's a new function, whoa, new function, alright, g of x looks like this, um, negative absolute f of x, plus 2. Ooh, watch out for that negative. Now, here's the thing. Think about this. Is that negative inside or outside the absolute function? It's outside. That means the whole graph can be negative. You know, it's only what's on the inside that has to be positive. Inside. So, in this case, the first thing you're going to do, I mean, this is all just transformations. If you know transformations, this is God. Right? So, the first thing you want to do is g of x, well, let's I would always draw the same thing again. I would always draw the same thing again. First thing, absoluted. So now it looks like uh, boom, boom. Looks like that. Okay? My sexy drawing. Second thing is that negative. Okay? So you do the negative before you do the plus two. Obviously, because we know our transformations. At least I do. You better too. That negative, what does that do? Negative, okay, now everything is reflected. It's outside, up and down. Everything is now reflected. So now it doesn't look like this. It looks something more like this. Boom, 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 boom. Bad drawing, but you get the point. You get the point. Everything's reflected. And now plus two, guess what? Everything goes up to. So now the whole graph looks like this. Boom, 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 boom. That's it. That is it. So if you know your transformations, if you know your transformations, this becomes easy. I promise you. If you know your transformations, this becomes easy. So that's pretty much it for the basic um, idea of absolute functions. And I'll make another video on some of the more advanced kind of stuff uh, when it comes to absolute functions. But, but this is it. This, there's nothing really that much harder in absolute functions. So actually, homework. You didn't remind me. You did not remind me. I said I'll give you homework and God, can't trust you with anything, can I? Alright, so, for the people who are watching at home, and that includes you, Mitchie, 
You need to practice. Because we know your teacher ain't going to give a shit. All right. Homework. So, um, you know what? This is what you could do. You could do your own YouTube video with a solution. Yes, that's you. That's, I'm talking to you. So, uh, homework. First question. Let's say we have y equals negative 2 absolute x plus 2 absolute minus 4. Nice and easy. So I want you to draw it, find the xy intercept when you can. And yes, you can. I believe in you. Uh, y equals... Um, man, this is getting boring. Thinking of questions is the hardest thing you could possibly imagine. Stupid. Okay, three absolute three x minus six minus plus one. All right, just do those questions. Let me know what you get. Make your own YouTube video. Share the news. Share with everyone. Don't, actually, no. Don't share this video. Do not share with anyone you know because then they'll get better scores than you, and you don't want Bosco to beat your ass. You're gonna beat him, right? You gotta beat him, all right, Michi? And by the way, Michi, you have it sacked next week, and there's some money on the line. There's some cash to be won if you beat Bosco. So beat him, all right? That concludes this video. I'll make another one on some more advanced stuff of uh, absolute functions. But go home, do those things, and I'll see you very soon.